Yes, the fedora-wearing John Hudson is back with an update on the unbiased UFO report that happens every couple of nights here on the big show. And, John, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Always appreciate you here, buddy. Well, glad to be here, and thank you, everyone, for sticking around. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite an interesting couple of days, quite a lot happening in the last couple of days. Let's start off with an article on the debrief.org. That's Tim McMillan's news site. Great publications over there about anti-gravity. What is going on here? Okay, so this this is really cool. And this is a lesson that everyone should pay attention to, because at the end of what I tell you, I'm going to talk about someone that most of you know and uh, who was a major figure in this whole operation. So essentially what it came down to is that there are a bunch of physics lists floating around the Internet. Um, uh, I'm on one that um, um, I think Jack Sarfati runs um, some, you know, there's all, there's all sorts of other ones around and, um, and, you know, they all have different people on them. Some are full of NASA people. Some are full of JPL people. Some are full of paranormal people. And essentially um, a, a guy named uh, Mark Sokol um, uh, and Mark, if I mispronounced your last name, I apologize. Um, basically got together with uh, a couple other people, specifically Tim Ventura and it's decided to take all these different lists and bring those people together and start doing uh, Zoom calls where people could present what they're working on. And this grew uh, pretty quickly from 50 to 60 participants to 500 participants. And now they have a, uh, in, it's an invite only um, uh, for, for presenting but they they publish it on on YouTube so anyone can go watch it. And every two weeks they have this very it's many, many hour long presentation where and some big people have presented for this group. Um, uh, Sonny White, Dr. Sonny White from from NASA, um, uh, NASA fame, who's now on his own. Um, the guy that um, uh, the guy in the UK that got the M drive stuff working. Um, uh, you know, a bunch of significant people and the, the email lists and the debrief went after these email lists and researched the people on them. And these lists were full of senior people at, you know, MIT, Harvard, JPL, NASA, you pick it. I mean, everyone was in there. Um, and, and I can attest to it. The list I'm on has some crazy people on it. And, uh, and basically they brought all these people together and now they meet every two weeks. They've had 22 meetings so far and they're making some progress and they're getting a lot of attention and they're getting the right people contributing. Now, does this have a tie to UFOs and the propulsion systems that many people have been asking questions about? Well, uh, depends on who you ask. Okay. Um, to some of the people within the group, not really, um, perhaps inspired, um, perhaps awareness that there are other possibilities inspired by. Um, however, one of the primary people in this is someone that you all know very well, which is alien scientist, Jeremy Reese. And he is one of the, he's one of the founding members of this group. And so, you know, he's been around for a long time, been doing YouTube uh, presentations for a long time. His entire, you know, motivation for getting into this was UFOs and trying to figure out how to really build one. Uh, Mark Sokol, um, I believe, has um, some some interest and background in it. But he he's what I love about him is he's all about taking this to an engineering level as opposed to a theoretical physical level. So they have a uh, Jeremy and Mark and a couple other guys have actually built a lab and they're actually doing like good science, like good actual like testing of these different devices. And it's it's exciting. But what I want to point out is that Jeremy. I mean, he's one of us. I mean, he's been he's been around for a long time and he finally put all of his passion towards something important. And now they're doing something really big and it's a good thing. No, I think that's great because, I mean, if, if we're trying to blend the two, I mean, look, technology is going further. We now have people who are talking about time travel uh, on Twitter. That has been uh, in one of the private groups I'm in right now. That has been a very big topic of discussion because everybody is trying to figure out how these extraterrestrials, ultra terrestrials, whatever you want to call them, are getting here. So, I mean, now that we have people talking anti-gravity, okay, we have people talking about time travel. I mean, could we be on the cusp of something very big scientifically here over the next 10 to 20 years? Oh, I would, I would argue before then, look, like, what even before this whole UFO thing broke out, 
in almost every single field science that I track, there have been independently incredible advancements in the last five to 10 years. And now what's happening is all of these little, little advancements are now coming together and they're becoming aware of each other. And what's going on right now, I mean, people talk about uh, cloaking devices being a big deal. People, cloaking devices happen. They're now like they don't they don't work like Star Trek. They're a lot more complicated, but you the, uh, you can make things disappear. No problem. There's ways to do it with power and without. I know someone who's very close um, uh, to a fusion project that is making huge inroads. You look at the M drive stuff. You look at the the leaner stuff, the low energy nuclear reaction stuff that used to be called cold fusion. There are so many different areas that are just exploding right now. And even without the UFO stuff, it is a one hell of a freaking time to be alive if you care about this stuff. That is awesome, my friend. Now let's move over to another story here where researcher Joe Mergia you know, who uh, is Brillo Pad hairdo is top notch when it comes to UFO Twitter. And he has been all over an interview that happened about former Nevada Senator Harry Reid and his interest in UFOs. What came out of that? Well, this is this is a, just a, a really quick another great example, because, you know, uh, people have been complaining about this lull in in information and so forth. And, you know, and, and they've been using it as an excuse to go after each other. And what Joe has done is what everyone should be doing, because there's been a, a crazy amount of stuff happening for the last year or two. And the truth is, most of it, we've barely scratched the surface. And so what he's doing is he's going through and he's creating transcripts of all these interviews that were done by significant people all around. And this one is an interview that uh, Senator Harry Reid did for the New York Times in May. And, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, I can't go through all of them because of just all the crazy points that he makes. But basically, um, you know, Reid basically goes through and explains not only um, you know, you know what his different opinions are, but he gives timelines. He gives um, he gives guidance to where he thinks things are going to go. He he talks about situations he was in. I mean, this is a this is an incredibly detailed interview, and uh, I'll post. You know, I mean, my goodness, Joe put down like twenty something steps um, of of things that he that just blew his mind. Um, but essentially, um, you know, this is. Um, this is a fantastic interview that I think a lot of us either watched and didn't pay enough attention to or just glossed over. And Joe's using this downtime to basically dig into this stuff. And, you know, th this is this is really good information. This, I mean, for people that have any holes in their knowledge, this stitches it together in a beautiful way. It really does. And and, you know, the one thing that always frustrates me about former Senator Harry Reid was the fact that he didn't start talking publicly about this until well after his days in Washington, D.C. were over. Yep. And, you know, people will say, well, he still has a lot of pull within the Democratic Party and within Washington, D.C. He, you know, he's one of those, you know, highly respected former senators that still carries a lot of clout, especially in the security and defense of the United States. But for me, man, you know, how much of a difference would it have made if he was the Mark Warner or the Marco Rubio, considering Area 51 is in his state? You know, a lot of UFO sightings are in his state. There's a lot of mystery. You know, I mean, it didn't come out until after he was in office that he had ver uh, uh, visited Area 51 numerous times, numerous times. I know. And I know this is hard for people to accept, but the truth of the matter is, is that if he had done half of the things he's done since he got out while he was in, two things were very likely to happen. One, he would have lost all his real political clout. So his ability to actually do anything for the Democratic Party, which was his primary purpose, would have been severely crippled. Or two, to be very clear, there's a good chance he would have ended up in jail. Because when you are actually signed in and read in and active in those situations, I mean, the gang of eight, I mean, they hear an incredible amount of information and there's a trust level. And if you violate that trust while you're in that role, boy, man, I all hell and damnation will come down on you. No, I understand that. But he still could have got the topic out. 
he still uh, no, yeah agreed no right? no i agree it would have had, uh, yeah. had a lot yeah. more clout if he would have said look we got some things out there that we can't prove if he would have had this same message while he was in office it would have been a lot better i mean he's the guy who's been going after this story for 30 years 30 yep. years and in yep. my opinion, he's the guy, along with Robert Bigelow, who saved Bob Lazar and saved Lazar's butt. Now, yep. I mean, there's a lot of ties here to what is going on. And I think he really knows what is happening. You know, I hey, look, I fully agree with you. He's not going to come out and say, you know, anything that is NDAs, which are lifelong, that he will ever speak up publicly. You know, and it's too bad because, I mean, it, it's like being so so close yet so far away. But, I mean, he owes it. These were the people who elected him to, to, to do this. He owes it, in my opinion. Well, the, the, the thing that's hard to remember is that, is that his, uh, the other things he was doing, the other stuff that he was doing for Congress and for the Democratic Party, were always a higher priority than this than this issue. It was always a higher priority than this issue. That's sad when it's all about the party and not the people. But that's today's politics, unfortunately. Agreed. Agreed. Do we see any more coming out of Harry Reid or any of the names here in the near future? Uh, I... I would I would ask you I think I would phrase the question a, a different way and that is that are any of them going to stop before they pass on? Uh, I would argue that each one of these uh, folks are going to continue to just um, you know occasionally give interviews and leak out more and more information and will get more bold and will get more confident that they can do so until someone slaps them uh, back or until they pass on. And so I, my guess is that we will continue to hear from Harry Reid for some time. It'll be interesting, though, because in the end, the question now becomes, who's going to be the next Harry Reid? Is it going to be Mark Warner? Is it going to be Marco Rubio? Is it going to be someone completely else who has a real interest in this subject? Yeah, it won't. I, my guess is it won't be anyone that we currently know about. But to be honest with you, I haven't actually looked closely at who the Gang of Eight is now, who they've been in the last 10 years, and, and, and you know, made any kind of guesstimates on where each of those individuals are going to go. Because you got to realize Rubio is going to only do it as far as it, he believes it helps his presidential chances. If he thinks any of it uh, gets in the way of his chance of becoming president, uh, he won't touch with a 10-foot pole. Very true. Are you still surprised, though, that... President Biden hasn't come out and said anything about this yet, while everybody around him seems to be talking UFOs. Not in the slightest, you know, to be honest with you, and I know I'll be unpopular in saying this, but if I was Biden, that's exactly what I would be doing. Because here's the thing, there is a process going on, and there are sides in that process. And the president needs to stay above that process. And now if people, if, if NASA comes out with something, if anyone comes out with something, he, he can then stand where he sits and, and say, wow, that's really interesting, you know? But, you know, he starts getting involved in it and now he becomes part of the game and that completely hampers his ability to do his job. Very true. Very true. John, big thank you for another high quality unbiased UFO report. We always appreciate you coming on Spaced Out Radio. And stick around. Stick around. We'll hang out afterwards. Let's get to the news. Thanks.